Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use user parameters to make this finger jointed laser cut box. To make user parameters, go to Modify, Change Parameters. These parameters I set up in the previous video. If you've never used user parameters before, I suggest watching that video so you know how to set these up. We're actually going to change the names of some of these parameters to show that they are never set in stone. For example, this height parameter, I'm going to change to depth. It automatically updates its variable in the expression. Then we're going to make a new parameter and we're going to call it height. And this will be depth times 0.5. This makes it half the height of depth. And I can also add the comment here if I change this comment and also add a comment here. Now I'm going to create a component. It's always a good idea to create a component. I'll call this component base. We want to use the origin planes to make some mirrors when we're making our object. So it's a great idea to start from the origin. So I'll create a sketch on the ground plane. And then for the rectangle, I'll make a center point rectangle and I'll make sure that I click the origin when I drag out. This can be depth, tab, width. So now I already have a locked in sketch. We know that it's fully constrained because if we twirl out our browser, we see the red padlock. Now I need to draw some rectangles. First, I'll start on the top. I'll draw one rectangle, two rectangles, three rectangles. Make sure that they're coincident on this top line. Then I'll get the line tool and I'll draw from the midpoint over, from the midpoint to this midpoint, from the midpoint to this midpoint, and from the midpoint to this midpoint. Make sure all those lines are perpendicular. Then you can hold shift and click each of these lines. You can come over to the line type in the sketch palette and click construction, or you can use the keyboard shortcut of X. Next, we want to make all of these lines equal. So while they're all selected, click the equal constraint. That makes all those construction lines equal. Then we'll shift click these three lines and we'll make them equal. We'll click D on our keyboard, click this line to here, and we'll type in ply. This is a user parameter we set up in the previous video for the ply width thickness. Lastly, we just need to change the distance of one of these. We can pick a round number. Now all of these fingers are evenly spaced and they're the same size. Next, we want to mirror them across. So click the mirror sketch command and it says, what objects do you want to mirror? So we will click these objects. It's easier to click the command first rather than trying to select the objects, then click the command. This way I don't have to hold shift while I click the objects. Then it says mirror line, and we don't have one, but if I orbit, I can use this origin plane. If you don't see the origin plane, it may be turned off. So go ahead and turn it on. And now these are mirrored across. We just need to do the same steps on this side. So I'll get my rectangle, one rectangle, two rectangles, three rectangles. Then I'll get the line tool and I'll draw from the midpoints of each of these rectangles. Make sure that these lines are perpendicular. Press escape to get the selection tool. Shift click all of these lines. You can press X to make them construction lines, then click the equal constraint. Then we'll get the selection tool and we'll click these lines. We will also make them equal. Then we can dimension one of them by clicking D, bring this over, and then we can just type this dimension and they'll be the same size as all our other fingers. And lastly, we just need to make sure they're the thickness of ply. Now we're ready to make our mirror. So we'll click the mirror command. Then again, we'll click the objects that we want to mirror. We just need to click the lines, click the command first. That way it's easy to select these objects. We don't have to hold shift if we click the command first. Then we need the mirror line. We'll orbit so we can see this plane. And we'll press OK. Now we're ready to finish our sketch and extrude. Press E to extrude or click the button on the top. And we just want this inner piece. And we're going to go up, ply. So now we have our base. Activate the top level component and let's create a new component and call it long side. We'll go ahead and create a sketch. 
and we can do that right on the edge of this object. We'll press P to project, and we want to make sure we project in all of these pieces and say OK. Then we'll draw a rectangle from this corner over here. Sometimes it's hard to get this to be coincident, so I like to draw it off to the side, then click the coincident command. We need to dimension this rectangle. We'll dimension it height. And now when we extrude this, we will already have these fingers. So we just need to add fingers to the sides of the box here. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll make two rectangles. Then grab your line tool, draw from the midpoints to the edge, from the midpoint to the midpoint, and then once again, from the midpoint to the edge. And depending on the aesthetics, you can either draw here or here. I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom and then make sure that that line is perpendicular. Make sure you select all three of those lines. Hold the shift key. Then we can make them construction lines. Also, click the equal constraint so they're all the same size. Then we'll make sure we select these two finger lines. Also make those equal. If you get an error like this, it may be that you accidentally have a constraint. So notice that this midpoint constraint is constraining this rectangle. Just click the constraint and then delete it. Now I can click the equal lines and they will be the same size. I just need to dimension them to be the size of plywood. So type ply and they need to be collinear. So I'll click this one and this one and they're collinear and I'll give them a dimension of 15. Perfect. Now we can mirror those across. So we'll go ahead and click the mirror command. What objects? We want this object, this object, this object, this object, this object, this object. Then select the mirror line. We'll orbit and we can click this origin plane right here and it should mirror straight across. This is the advantage of drawing a center point rectangle from the origin. We'll finish our sketch. Now we'll extrude and we wanna click this section, and then we wanna click the little finger tabs that go in between. And in this case, we need to go negative ply. Great, then we'll go back up and activate the top level component, and we'll create a mirror. What are we gonna mirror? And this time we're gonna mirror components. What component? Long side. What mirror plane? Well, the origin plane. Now we have long side over there, and we'll press OK. Now there's two ways we can do the next step. We can go ahead and make a single rectangle and then subtract everything out, or we can draw the sketches. I think I'll just make a rectangle and subtract everything away. So let's go ahead and create a new component. We'll call this short side. We'll create a sketch, and we can do it right on the edge of this piece. Then we'll project in this piece and this piece, then we'll say R, drag over, and now we can finish our sketch. We'll go ahead and press E and select everything. And in this case, we wanna go negative ply. And we'll say new body, okay. Next, go ahead and select the top level component and we can make a combine command. So the target body will be short side, then the tool bodies will be all three of these pieces. And we don't want to join, we want to cut, and we want to keep the tools. So we'll say, okay. So now this piece is cut. Next, we just need to create one more mirror. So we'll create mirror. We want to mirror components. We'll mirror this component. And for the mirror plane, we'll select the middle. Now we have a parametric finger jointed box. Of course, the number of tabs is not parametric. You can do this too with a bit of equations in your user parameters, but within a reasonable size, this will update. The only other change you could make is go back in and make all of those 15 millimeter tab lengths be a parametric dimension. So if you go back to this sketch and we edit this sketch, we have this first 15, but this here is actually just a hard coded dimension. So if we go to modify, change parameters, we can add one more parameter and call it tab and make it 15. Finish this sketch. And if you recall on one of the sides, we typed in a hard coded 
15. So let's go ahead and edit this sketch. And right here, this is also hard coded 15. We can just type tab. And now that'll update automatically. Here's our box. A nice convenient way to see what's going on is you can go to inspect and then you can turn on component color cycling. It's the component color cycling toggle. And then it shows you each of these components in a different color. This can be really convenient for inspecting what's going on and seeing if you have any errors. For example, here we can see that these two components are overlapping each other. We can easily do that with a combine command. So the target body will be this side, and then the tool body will be this other short side. And we want to keep the tools cut. We need to do one more operation. This time it will be this side. We'll still use this body. Press OK. And now you notice we don't have any interference between the various pieces. So this is a great way to inspect your model to see if you have any overlapping finger joints. And remember, this is parametric. So if we go to Modify, Change Parameters, I'll shorten this so we can see. If I go ahead and change the depth, we can make this 150. Notice the entire box changes. If I made this even longer, say 200, it gets much larger. And then I can also change these tabs to say 25, and then the tabs get longer. So this way you can make a simple parametric box and then lay it flat with the arrange command to do your laser cutting. Hopefully you can use user parameters to make finger joints very quickly in Fusion 360.